continuing to do what I set out to do in the beginning, and that is to raise awareness among the American people. The American people have to stand up and say where they stand, and if they are against what is happening, they can no longer just stand there and give their opinion, but they have to be willing to sacrifice to stop it. It is our country, and we all have to contribute to setting it on the right path. Hello. Hello, this is Aaron Watada. May I speak to Mr. Emmy or Mr. Kudomiya, please? Uh, this is uh, Frank Emmy. How are you doing, sir? Morning. Thank Morning. you for calling. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. We've been uh, anticipating this call for quite a while, and I'm certainly glad to hear your voice. Well, you're welcome, and I'm glad to uh, finally touch base with you, and, um, and it's an honor and a privilege to talk to you. Thank you. Well, uh... Was there any particular uh, question or uh, uh, anything like you liked uh, us to uh, answer, or do you have questions on? Well, I think the one thing that I noticed, uh, especially in making my decision a while ago, was that I'm not the first. There are always people who have come before me uh, in every instance, in every place and time when there's injustice and when we, when people stand up and try to correct this injustice. And uh, I took great inspiration and encouragement from that, and it helped me in the decision that I made. And I just certainly want to hear your story um, because it's sadly and unfortunately among the Japanese American community, it's not a story that you hear um, very often or at all even. And so um, I think it's it's important to understand history so that we can learn from um, learn from our past and uh, become better as as people, as Japanese Americans, and more importantly, as Americans. Uh, sitting here with, with me is uh, uh, a resistor uh, uh, from the Hartmont Fair Play Committee and uh, World War II veteran. The resistor is uh, Yoshi Kolomiya, and the World War II veteran <coughs> is uh, Paul Tsuneishi, who's been very active in uh, presenting the resistor story and uh, has been supportive of the uh, uh, Resistors and very supportive of uh, your uh, actions. Well, hello, gentlemen, and thank you for your support. Yosh would like to say a few words here. He's one of the resistors that uh, one of the originals, uh, originals of the '63 resistor from Hard Mountain. Hi, Aaron. How are you doing, sir? Uh, it's an honor and a privilege. Thank you very much. Sure. Very proud that you're taking the stand that you are. Uh, I have a message here that I've uh, written out. I, I'm not very good at uh, thinking on my feet, and I'm not, I'm not so sure that I'm much better sitting on my ass. Yeah. Um, I was truly alarmed when I realized the attorney was basing your defense on the questionable legality of the war in Iraq. Obviously, a military court cannot and would not render a judgment on that issue, and accur as accurate as the assertions may be. It's like being scheduled for a chess match and showing up with a basketball. Even Kobe Bryant couldn't get away with that. It reminds me of my own civil trial for draft resistance in 1944, our attorney, our attorney based our defense on the questionable constitutionality of the camps. Of course, the district court couldn't render a judgment on an issue beyond the scope of, this of his jurisdiction. So the judge simply asked, 
Did you or did you not report for your pre-induction physical exams? We hadn't, of course, so we were found guilty. However, the same Selective Service Act specifically states that any person detained in the custody of an authorized government agency shall be classified for F and not be eligible nor subject to the draft. We were, of course, in the custody of the War Relocation Authority when we were erroneously classified 1A. Our attorney had arrived at the courthouse with a basketball. Forgive me for making light of a very serious matter, but you did state that you were well aware of the possible consequences of your actions and were willing to bear those consequences. Dishonorable discharge may be a most shameful prospect a military man must, could face. Nonetheless, your sacrifice is the most honorable and courageous act of your entire military career. We, the members of the Fair Play Committee, are not afraid to go to war. We are not afraid to risk our lives for our country. We would gladly sacrifice our lives to protect and uphold the principles and ideals of our country as set forth in the Constitution and Bill of Rights. For on its inviolability depends the freedom, liberty, and justice and protection of all people, including Japanese Americans and all other minority groups. But have we been given such freedom, such liberty, such justice, such protection? No. Without any hearings, without due process of law as guaranteed by the Constitution and Bill of Rights, without any charges filed against us, Without any evidence of wrongdoing, uh, wrongdoing on our part, 110,000 innocent people were kicked out of their homes, literally uprooted from where they have lived for the greater part of their life, and herded like dangerous criminals into concentration camps with barbed wire fences and military police guarding it. And then, without rectification of the injustice committed against us, nor without restoration of our rights as guaranteed by the Constitution, we are ordered to join the Army through discriminatory procedures into a segregated combat unit. Is that the American way? No. The FBC believes that unless such actions are posed now, the steps taken to remedy such injustices and discriminations immediately, the future of all minorities and the future of this democratic nation is in danger. Thus, the members of the Fair Play Committee unanimously decided at their last open meeting that until we are restored all our rights, all discriminatory features of the Selective Service are abolished, and measures are taken to remedy the past injustices through judicial pronouncement or congressional act. We feel that the present pro program of drafting us from this concentration camp is unjust, unconstitutional, and against all principles, civilized usage. Therefore, we members of the Fair Play Committee hereby refuse to go to the physical examination or to the induction if and when we are called in order to contest the issue. We were sentenced to four years in a federal penitentiary at uh, Leavenworth, 10th Circuit Court of Appeals, reversed our convictions. And although we won our case at the end, we still had to spend 15 months in the Leavenworth penitentiary. You have a very strong moral case against the government, but I'm just wondering if that's going to be enough to have you uh, beat this uh, rap. What do you think? Well, you know, certainly not. I don't think the military law is set up uh, not for the rights of the, the defendant or those who against, go against the policy. And to me, that's not important. It's not important whether you have these, uh, like you said before, the, the United States government has violated its own principles and its own laws. Um, we in the military take an oath to defend the Constitution. And when we have um, a government that violates its own treaties and laws that it has incorporated into the Constitution, um, and then it forces soldiers to to condone and enable that behavior. Um, Do you think the uh, Nuremberg principles uh, would not apply in your case? I certainly believe it applies, and it applies to every soldier out there. Um, we, we, we are either part of the problem or we're part of the solution. And just simply going along with whatever we're told and saying that, well, we're not part of American foreign policy, that's no excuse, uh, especially when you see the devastation we have wrought upon the Iraqi people and around the world. At least the ACLU seemed to be uh, uh, on your side. 
And uh, JHCL seems to be taking some interest, uh, especially the Hawaii group, which supported you right from the beginning, whereas the mainlander, JHCL, is still as lukewarm as they were uh, against us uh, during World War II. During that period, they went further than the government. They wanted to charge, they said the government should charge us with sedition instead of just draft evasion. And uh, uh, the, even though the ACLU and the JCL National has come out to at least support my right to free speech, they have not taken a stance on the war. And I think that's unfortunate and it's tragic within our society in that no longer can any American citizen or organization simply sit on the fence and say, well, we don't take a position on the war because the war in itself is unconstitutional in many forms. And we as Americans have to step up and say either we agree with what's going on or we disagree with what's going on. Well, if you agree with this war, you're going to have to be able to support that and say why you do. If you disagree, um, like I do, and like many of us do, then you're going to have to ask yourself, what are you willing to sacrifice of yourself in order to correct the injustice and wrongs of this government in regards to the Iraq war? And that's not what many organizations are willing to do, to put themselves out there they simply make excuses and say, well, that's beyond the scope of our organizational mandate or things like that. But the fact of the matter is we are all Americans at heart, no matter what our cause, or no matter what our mission statement. And, and we have to come out and say where we stand on this war because it affects us all and it affects our constitutional rights. Well, uh, people would uh, stop and think a little bit why uh, they would all be against the war and... Uh, uh, you, you wouldn't have any problem in, in a trial to run for these uh, Nazi-like, fa fascist-like laws that uh, seem to be uh, in uh, vogue now among the Bush administration. You're right, and I think a lot of people are misguided into thinking that what we're doing is patriotic and we're fighting for freedom and democracy when it's just the exact opposite. Uh, we're just fighting for greed and power for just a few people within our society. And um, I think back, back in World War II, what you were all fighting for is to say that, how can we go out there and fight for, for freedom and liberty and democracy when we don't even have this here at home in America? I think the whole issue is the conflict between what we arrived at in the Nuremberg trials and what you were compelled to do in the military today. I think that many people have seen that blind obedience cannot be tolerated within our country and that includes in the military. Um, and that doesn't just say, that doesn't just include individual war crimes, it includes the greatest crime against the peace, which is, as they determined after Nuremberg, wars of aggression. Wars that are not out of necessity, but out of choice, uh, for profit or power, whatever it may be. Um, and that everyone has a responsibility, whether you take, we all take part in it. If, we, if you pay your taxes, uh, you're taking part in this war. And we all have a responsibility, as they determined after Nuremberg, whether you're the exactly. lowest soldier or the highest ranking general, or just a regular civilian, we all have a responsibility in the international and even in the American sense to resist and refuse uh, enabling and condoning this criminal behavior. It seems that uh, the Japanese American community has this stigma where, you know, we're, we're kind of quiet and obedient and we, we go along with uh, what we're told to do, but there are always the, the minority among us who who realize what's going on and that it's not acceptable to be silent and then just to sit on the side and watch as things go by um, because eventually they will come for us and they will come for all of us. We're 100 percent behind you uh, on that issue of course. I don't think you really had a choice in the matter and uh, it's very inspiring to know of the choice that you did make. Can I, can I just tell you something really quick?
there was a long time when I went through a depression because I didn't, I told myself I didn't have a choice. That I joined the military and I had only one duty and that was to obey what I was told, uh, regardless of how I felt inside. And it really hurt me for a long time because I imprisoned myself by telling myself I didn't have a choice. It didn't matter that I might be sent to prison. I was already in prison. My freedom was already gone. And when I told myself that I do have a choice, I have a choice to do what is morally right, what is in my conscience, and what I can live with for the rest of my life. And even though that comes with consequences, I do have that choice. And when I realized that, and when I chose what was right for me, I became free again. And I think everybody has to remember that and, exactly. and realize that's what's important in life. I'm certainly happy that we were able to have this, this discussion with you, Aaron. And um, we just want to assure you that uh, uh, you're coming from a long line of uh, a, a kind of uh, tradition uh, that uh, perhaps our group uh, set way back in 1944. And uh, I just want to assure you that uh, you are not alone. You know, we're really, really proud of you, uh, Aaron, and uh, uh, hope the, the trial will come out uh, favorably for you, the upcoming trial. And uh, you have a lot of people uh, uh, on your side, so uh, keep up the uh, good work. Thank you, and you too. What I gained is just uh, an example of courage and the willingness to do what is right over the consequences um, before me. And I've always believed and uh, that what I'm doing is not unique. It's, it's been done all throughout our history uh, and especially in American history. Uh, there are people who have always stood up regardless of, of the sacrifice and the consequences because they strongly believe that they can only do the right thing. And uh, that's the same thing with uh, the Jap Japanese Americans uh, who resisted um, internment and, and the draft. They did what was right. And uh, I think they were vindicated, or well, they were vindicated years after that. And it's unfortunate that it's not a big part of Japanese American history or even American history, because um, we can only learn from the past and certainly it helped me in the decision that I made and knowing that even if I did come out and there was nobody who supported me, which fortunately there is, um, at least I would have known that I came from a, a long line of, of resistance towards injustice.